What are you doing, Trevor? Spag off. Charming. If you must know, it's a protest. Sort of political act. I am covering the walls with my own faeces. So what's different? What do you mean? Well, aren't you always covering the walls with your own shit? You normally call it going to the toilet. My personal hygiene is beyond reproach. I'll have you know, I went through an entire roll of arsewipe last year. I stand corrected. How many rolls did you use during the 1980s? Don't remember. Five? No, tell a lie. Six. And how many boxes of man-sized tissues do you go through every week? Fifty-three. I don't get it. It's a different discipline. What is your protest concerning? Animal experiments. Oh? Yeah. I was using some shampoo last week and it really burnt my eyes. Bloody stuff should have been tested first. Tested on what? Rabbits, of course. Nothing potentially poisonous, hazardous or corrosive should be put into the shops without first being put into the eyes of baby rabbits. I'm going to kill myself. This is my day, this is my Is that 999? Which service? Hmm. Well, ambulance, I suppose. I am in agony. It's my back. Yeah, my back. The middle of my back. No, I have not fallen down the stairs. No, I have not slipped a disc. I have got an itch. An itch! No, I am not winding you up. I've got an itch and I can't reach it. What do you mean you can't send an ambulance for that? I've told you, I'm in agony. Fucking agony! Hello? Hello? Bastards. I'll try the fire brigade. What are you doing? I've got an itch. Hmm. I've got an itch and I can't reach it. It's driving me fucking mad. So? So... Do you think you could possibly scratch it for me? Sod off. What? Well, it always starts like this, doesn't it? You start by asking me to scratch your back, then you roll over and you ask me to scratch your front. The next thing I know, you've got an enormous great purple growler and you start panting like a dog on heat. I am a dog on heat. Well, I'm not falling for it this time. If you've got an itch, find someone else to scratch it for you. But I've only got short arms. Grow your claws. I'll pay you. With what? Jaffa cakes. If you think I'm going to play with your pink whippet for a bit of chocolate-covered sponge with a jammy filling, you're very much mistaken. So what do you do if you get fleas? I scratch them myself. What about the ones you can't reach? There is no part of the body that a cat cannot reach. That's how we keep ourselves so spotlessly clean. We are able to reach every square inch of our skin with our tongues. Now, you know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Yes. So there's not actually any need for me to say it, is there? No. So you won't scratch me back, then? No. What's in the bag? Fuck off. Well, where exactly is this itch? How many times do I have to tell you, donkey flaps? It's on my back. Where? Right in the middle. Well, why don't you scratch it yourself? I can't. Why not? Can't reach it. Why not? My arms are too short. Why? I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with evolution and natural selection. Uh, have you been watching Animal Planet again? Look, my back is itching. I can't reach it. Will you scratch it for me? Fuck off and die. You sadistic bastard. Well, why don't you rub your back up and down against the window frame? I tried that. And well, what happened? I fell out of the window. What about using an abrasive object with something sharp and pointed at one end? Brilliant idea. I'll use the parrot. How's it, bloke? Life is a continual quest for pleasure, isn't it? And people get pleasure in lots of different ways. I get enormous amount of pleasure out of looking after my little pet fishy. He's looking a lot better today, don't you think? 
I also get a tremendous amount of pleasure out of my collection of toothbrushes once owned by famous singers. Would you like to see them? This one used to belong to George Michael. Jy weet mo, sy is a koffie moffie, ne? This one has been used to scrape the plaque off the back molars of Michael Ball. And this little chappy here has spent two years massaging the gums of Debbie Harry. I've been writing to pop stars and asking them for their toothbrushes for six years now. And I've accumulated a vast and impressive collection. I have a matching set once owned by the village people and an oral B autographed by all the members of Bon Jovi and Martin McCutcheon. I think my proudest possession is the toothbrush that Buddy Holly forgot to pack just before he died in a terrible plane crash. Also, the dental floss Mama Cass was about to use when she chucked on her own vomit. Oh, there's something very intimate about a toothbrush. Very intimate indeed. By the way, did I ever tell you that I like to drink my own urine? I'm starving. Jesus Christ, you only ate about ten minutes ago. Must be those worms again. They are not worms. They are intestinal parasites. I thought those tablets had got rid of them. Nah, those little bastards have got real staying power. They've been there since the late 70s. So, uh, what gives you pleasure then? Let me think. Um, Mike Oldfield's first album, Good Call. Tubular Bells was a truly innovative composition. It was used on the original soundtrack of the film The Exorcist, you know. So I believe, so I believe. I didn't like his second album, the... No. Or his third. The fourth one was shit as well, wasn't it? Yeah. All Mike Oldfield's albums since Tubular Bells have been shit, haven't they? Oh, yes. Except for the re-release of Tubular Bells, of course. That wasn't shit, was it? Nah. Oh, come on, Feather Dick. Han Kuck, I'm not doing it. I'm not asking you for a Savaloy supper. I just want you to scratch my back. It's driving me insane. It's right in the middle. Here. Why do you want me to do it? Because you are equipped with one of creation's great natural back scratchers. My penis. Your beak, you idiot. A billion years of evolution and selective breeding has chosen to give you a big pointy thing on the front of your face. Have you been watching Animal Planet again? I wish people would stop asking me that. You have a multi-purpose, custom-designed tool for preening and grooming and cleaning and for digging nuts out of their shells and for getting little stones out of horses' hooves and... Are you sure you're not thinking of a Swiss army knife? Maybe I am. What are you again? A parrot. So I couldn't, for example, use you for getting a cork out of a bottle of wine? No. Or for whittling a small piece of driftwood into the shape of a tiny ship? No. And then inserting it into a very small bottle? No. You might be able to use my beak to clip your toenails. Will you please scratch my fucking back? No. Right. No. <laughs> I've had another letter from my boyfriend, Vince. All he ever thinks of is pleasure. He stowed away in the lifeboat of a cross-channel ferry last week. Now he's down in Cannes trying to sell the film rights to his authorised autobiography. Last time he did this, he was away for six and a half months. He came back with a three-episode miniseries, Elton John's wig and a signed photograph of Liz Hurley squatting in a litter tray. When he gets back this time, I'm going to cut him into equal parts and feed him to the rats over a 13-week period with an option for a further 13 parts. Don't talk to me about pleasure. Since Vince buggered off, there are very few avenues of pleasure open to me. Even the Prozac on the kitty cat doesn't help anymore. You know those mobile phones that vibrate? Well, I found one that someone had lost, and in desperation I inserted it, long ways, in, you know, my most private place. And guess what? It hasn't rung once. Just my luck to find a vibrating phone belonging to someone with no fucking friends. <coughs> Oh, 
Oh, for fuck's sake. All right. I'm sorry I used you to scratch my back. <coughs> and I'm sorry I used you to wipe my bottom. <coughs> and I'm really, really sorry I flushed you down the Hewitt afterwards. <coughs> right. Hamish. What? Will you scratch my back? Fuck off! <laughs>